Uh, so what I'm going to do is to review some protocols that you had submitted, right? And I'm going to see these protocols uh, and basically see if they are good. What can I learn from these protocols? What can you learn from these protocols? And uh, uh, how do these protocols compare to what we use at Mass General Hospital, where I come from? And how do these protocols compare to the AAPM protocols that are out there on their website? Okay? And uh, we have not done this kind of a session before. So if there are any errors or any glitches, blame me. Okay? Uh, and I'm very thankful to Dr. Diana Cody for helping me with this. She did a great job in suggesting me what template should be used. Thank you. So this is where we go. Okay, so uh, most of the protocols that I'm going to be reviewing are basically routine chest CT and lung nodule, right? And uh, basically the AAPM website has the list of indications for which a routine chest CT should be done. Now, unfortunately, well, not as much unfortunately, but incidentally, uh, AAPM website only has the routine chest protocol. They do not have a lung nodule protocol. The good thing about that is that you use this for your routine chest CT, the AAPM protocols, and then you dial down the doses for your lung cancer screening or lung nodule follow-up. So it's a good starting point, right, and to work upon in order to optimize uh, the protocols. But they list the indications for which uh, this routine chest CT should be used. Now, the first institution that I selected, uh, basically they uploaded two protocols, a routine chest CT and lung nodule. Well, so this institution had Siemens 64 slice scanner, right? And for the routine chest CT that they submitted, they had a scan length extending from the apex of the lung to the adrenals. Fine, this is what we do at our institution as well. 0.5 second rotation time seems fine. Many places use 0.8 second or 1 second rotation time even for their 64 and 128 slice scanner, not needed. Not needed at least for chest. Right? regardless of how big or how small the patient might be. You do not need that much juice for your chest CT. In fact, motion artifact is something you cannot fix. So try to be as fast as you can be. 0.4 or 0.5 second is generally where you want to be, not any higher. Beam collimation, well, 24 into 1.2 seems quite appropriate. It's a wide beam. If they had used 32 into 0.6, I would have said no. But this is a good beam for that scanner. Right. Pitch of 0.9, we already know Siemens scanner pitch does not really affect dose. So anything that's close to 1 or just above 1 is fine. Right, Quite good so far. KV of 120, well, I think for smaller patients in the chest, especially if you're going to do it with contrast, you can actually go 100 KV for patients who are less than 80 kilogram and get very good images. Your radiologists are going to be actually happier that you did it because the contrast in the aorta and the pulmonary arteries is going to shine. Uh, quality reference MAS. This is their metric for automatic exposure control technique, which they call as care dose 4D. They choose 124. When I see these funky numbers, 127, 126, I know there is something wrong. It was perhaps a default protocol that never got changed. Right? Uh, so, uh, not, uh, it's slightly higher. Right? We would have perhaps used 100. Right? Chest CT, again, you don't require that much use. Right? Remember, it's Two-third of the chest is just air, right? You can go with lower MAS. This is without any iterative reconstruction. No iris, no sapphire, right? Their slice thickness of five is perhaps okay, right? Most institutions use five millimeter. In our practice, in several other major tertiary healthcare centers, I have seen 2.5 or 3 millimeter image thickness, right? And that perhaps makes more sense in terms of being able to, A, see more nodules, well, you don't want to see more nodules, but in, 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 in a sense, you can see calcium in the nodules much more easily. And these nodules, then you would not follow up. So they would not get a repeat CT, right? So perhaps a slice thickness of three would be more appropriate. B35 kernel, we use a kernel of B31. And the way the Siemens work is, as the B numbers increase, the images become sharper, more noisier. As it decreases, the images become more smoother, less noisier. B35 is not terribly wrong. I would go with it. But if they were to drop their dose from, say, 125 to 100, they would see that there is an increase in the noise and that they can actually compensate by just dialing this B35 to B31. And they wouldn't know that much of a difference. 
So, what does the AAPM does? Well, virtually almost quite similar, uh, except that perhaps one of the things that they mentioned is 32 into 0.6, which is, I think, a little excessive. 64 into 0.6 would be better. Remember, it's a longer scan area. Wider beam is better here. A pitch of 1.4 is okay. You would like to go fast. That's fine. And they also recommend 100 MAS, which is what uh, I would have used. Incidentally, they seem to agree that 5 millimeter is a good slice thickness, although I would have thought otherwise that you have this small of a detector. Why do you want to use 5 millimeter and sacrifice all the data that you have? Right? It basically is eight, you know, just sacrificing the information resolution that it has. Uh, they also recommend B31, which is slightly softer kernel than compared to B35 that has been used. So uh, uh, how many of you actually use an MES that's over 100 for Siemens scanner for your chest CT? Okay. Okay. And how many of you use under 100 for your Siemens scanners? Well, I think my question should have been how many have you have Siemens, and then I would have seen more hands. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Uh, let's go to the next. Uh, so this is basically just comparing the MGH versus AAPM. We agree about 100 MAS. We don't really agree about the use of, uh, uh, you know, the slice thickness, but that's fine. Okay. Well, this institution has no lung nodule follow-up protocol. In fact, well, has no different lung nodule protocol, although they did submit both as a separate entity. So their lung nodule protocol is exactly the same as their routine chest CT. No difference. Okay. Well, if I put the lung nodule protocol from this institution here and I put MGH lung nodule protocol, you can see the difference. The most important difference here is that we use a fixed MA of 40 to 60. The patient is less than 200 pounds, he gets 40 MAS. If the patient is more than 200 pounds, he gets 60 MAS fixed. No modulation. And that is generally sufficient. So you do need to have a lung nodule protocol. If you do not have one, you would start by making your routine chest CT maybe 30% lower at the first step. And then as the radiologists get used to it, and before they begin to like it, you would drop it another by 30%. Okay, and that's how you would say, well, this is enough. And that we have found to be enough. Right? So that would be the main difference. You should have a separate lung nodule protocol. This institution did not have one. They need to make one. Next institution, routine chest CT. All right, this is their protocol here. They go from apex to adrenal, which is fine, which is what everybody does. They use a 0.28 second rotation. This is a Siemens definition 128 slice scanner. There is flash scanner, right? So they are going very fast, it's fine. I have no problems with that. They should be going fast, but perhaps a little, uh, we'll see. The pitch is 0.45, which is like a cardiac pitch, right? So either they are doing a gated studies for all their routine chest CT, otherwise this pitch seems to be too low. I would have rather swapped these two things, right? Go up a little bit on their rotation time so you can get more mass through, like half a second, that's what APM protocols also say, and would have increased this, at least doubled it or tripled it. Right? You do not want to overlap 50% when you're doing routine chest CT. That does not make uh, as much uh, sense to me, I don't know, but uh, quality reference MAS. Now one thing I have to say is that this institution actually does use sapphire. They did not say what setting of sapphire they use, but they do use it. Right? Their quality reference MAS is 124, exactly the same as the institution which did not have sapphire. So basically, they are not using sapphire. Right? They're just getting more prettier images. Well, what does Siemens say in the AAPM protocol? Well, they say when, if you have sapphire on board for that scanner, you should be at 65 MAS. Right? MGH, we tend to go to 80. Right? We don't go as low as 65. We go to 80. Right? And, of course, one of the things that you would find curious here is I-45 and I-50. Now, a B31 for Siemens is the same as I-31 with Sapphire, right? So that means as the I numbers increase from I-30 to I-50, the noise will increase, the sharpness will increase, but remember the noise is going to increase. And when the I numbers decrease to I-31 or 30, the noise goes down, right? So what are the reasons why these people are using a higher MAS? Could be that they are using a much sharper kernel, which have higher noise. So in order to overcome that noise, 
induced by their sharp kernel, they are actually bumping up their MAS, right? Uh, which is slightly counterintuitive, right? If they really wanted a sharper kernel, they should have reconstructed two images, one typically close to I30 or I31, and the other close to I50 or I60 or wherever they want to be. All right. Well, uh, uh, how many of you have Siemens scanner? If you could raise your hands. Okay. How many of you have uh, Sapphire available? Okay. All right. Good. So there are a few of you. And then uh, do you drop your MES for your uh, Sapphire when you're using Sapphire versus your filter pack? Have you dropped it? Okay. Okay. And there's a person in the back there with the tile. Do you drop your MES when you use, use your Sapphire? Okay. All right. Well, you should be. Okay. Well, so uh, let me go to this. So this place, again, has the same routine chess CT protocol as lung nodule follow-up. Let's see what they did. Well, uh, this is their routine protocol, and this is their lung nodule protocol. Again, they have a Siemens 128 slice scanner. And again, they basically go from apex to adrenal for both the routine and lung nodule. doesn't make sense. It's a non-contrast, low-dose exam. You're not going to get information from liver or adrenals or kidneys. There's no point going beyond the lungs when you're doing lung nodules. Right? So that is not a smiley face. Okay. Well, they use care KV, which is good, which means that they let their system pick up the right KV for the patient's size and the fact whether it's a contrast study or non-contrast study. Good. Right? What do they use for quality reference MAS? Well, 170 MAS. Uh, that is too high. Even though they're not using Sapphire, that's still too high. That's almost twice as high as, uh, you know, we would have used or what AAPM has recommended. Right? So certainly very high dose. The other thing is 5 millimeter. At 5 millimeter, their 170 MAS would perhaps have higher dose than what our abdominal CTs would have. Right? That's not where you want to be, okay? So you want to dial this number down slowly, maybe 20% steps or something like that, in order to come to a reasonable MES level, okay? They are using much sharper kernel than I have seen uh, many institutions using. B80 means that it's a really sharp setting to see the lungs. And that may be the reason why they have such a high MES, which is almost twice as other institutions, right? Because if you use that B80, uh, you're going to see very sharp lung, but the air is going to be just black holes, right? So not a very nice image to look at. And since they saw very noisy images, they decided, well, I have to bump up the MES. So unless they fix this, when they change this, they are going to find the image quality suffer and take a big bump. All right, the fourth institution has a routine chest CT protocol and has the same routine chest CT as lung nodule protocol. Let's see what that is. Well, this is a Siemens 64 again. We do have other vendors. <laughs> Just bear with me. Okay. Well, the problem here is, the main problem is 225 MAS. This institution did not state what they use, but I would be surprised if it was Sapphire. It does not seem like that, right? It's 225 is more than, it's about two and a half folds higher than where Siemens or AAPM wants you to be, right? This is a problem here. They are using 3 millimeter slices, but so are we. And we are at 100 MES, and so is the APM protocol, which recommends 100 MES. So this is quite high. The other thing that comes out is 0.75 pitch, right? Uh, the pitch is somewhat lower. I would have bumped it up a little bit, but not because of those, but just because I want to be faster when I'm doing chest CT, because this is a place where I'm looking for small lung nodules, small vessels, small airway. I want to go faster. Right? No need to keep uh, such a small pitch unless there is some other reason that I don't get. But regardless, uh, this needs to go down. That's the problem with this protocol. Okay. Uh, well, as I said and promised, Phillips. Okay. Uh, this, these people submitted routine chest CT protocol. And uh, uh, this was a 128-slice Phillips scanner. Uh, for their routine chest CT, they go from apex to adrenal. Brilliant. Uh, or ingenuous, uh, rotation time of 0.5 second, perfect. Uh, their KV is 120. They could have perhaps used a lower KV in smaller patients, uh, but not as much of an issue if they are doing non-contrast studies. They are not using automatic exposure control technique, right? 
So that doesn't really give them a smiley face. But what does give them is at least they are making an attempt to adjust the fixed MA according to the patient size, which is really nice because they do go for lower MAS uh, per image when they are doing the, or slice it should be, uh, when they are doing smaller patients compared to when they are using bigger, when they are doing it in larger patients. It's, it's actually a protocol that makes sense, except that they're not going to have the benefit of scanning at a lower MAS uh, in certain patients who are much below 150 pounds, right? Uh, so uh, for a routine chest, I would really encourage these people to actually start using automatic exposure control technique. Uh, they seem to be quite fine, actually, at slice thickness. So overall, it gets 9 out of 10. Good protocol. Well, uh, compare it to MGH and AAPM protocols. Uh, they are not using AEC. All the protocols in other institutions does recommend use AEC. Philips on AAPM recommends 140 MAS. It's not clear whether they recommend it with dose modulation, but I'm pretty sure that it should be. We are using 100, but the problem is that we are also using uh, their IDOS uh, 2 level. Okay? Uh, and again, we are using uh, KV that changes by the size of the patient. Smaller patients get lower KV, certainly when you're giving with contrast. Not as much when you're doing a routine chest CT without. Okay, another Phillips protocol, and in this case, actually, the lung nodule follow-up CTs actually have much lower dose than routine chest CT, which is how it should be. Let's look at it. Uh, this patient, uh, this protocol actually gets another smiley face. There's nothing wrong with this, right? Uh, except that perhaps for a contrast CT, they could have used 100 kV for patients less than 80 kilogram. It would have helped. They have a perfect Z-DOM, which is what we use, 100, and they have a lower dose, when they do lung nodule, about two and a half folds lower dose for their lung nodule protocol. This is an ideal protocol. They have good detectors, 32 into 1.25, wider beam. So this is how the protocol should be, that the lung nodule should get at least half the dose, if not lower, as compared to routine chest. Okay, uh, at the AAPM website, you can actually find protocols uh, from each vendor. This is an example from Philips. And you can find different protocols, very detailed, very nice effort from the, from the makers, basically. You know, uh, you will find the uh, MAS for each different type of scanners, basically. And you can see here they recommend somewhere between 125 to 140 MAS for chest CT. They don't really are not as aggressive about KV, which is kind of surprising, given that it's chest, it's low density, it's low attenuation. Could have been more aggressive here. Uh, and one thing that I really like is the slice thickness of threes. So they really uh, have nailed it there. A five millimeter is, I think, too thick for routine chastity, certainly with some of these advanced scanners. Uh, GE, uh, we did not have a complete protocol uploaded from G scanner. We did have a few, but they were very incomplete, and I could not use them meaningfully in my presentation. So therefore, I have this slide from AAPM. Again, nice protocols here from GE, 120 KV, perhaps could have been more aggressive with KV reduction. Uh, I do not like these 5.7. They seem to indicate much more level of accuracy than there is in these numbers, right? Uh, somewhat funky, right? Um, uh, these look fine, 13.0, I, although I doubt why 13.0, why not just 13. But anyway, one of the things that I get troubled is this high MAS limit, 400, and then it goes to 650, 650. Uh, our MAS for GE scanners cannot go beyond 440 MA, period irrespective of the size of the patient. For routine chest CT, 440 is the limit that we would allow it to go to. You really do not need that kind of a juice for a chest CT. You really don't. It's, it's unnecessary, right? So that's one problem that I have, right? These, again, for G scanners, extremely important that do not speak about the noise index, as I did. Do not speak about the noise index without, in the same breath, speaking about the slice thickness. These noise indices are for 5 millimeters. Right? If you change the slice thickness, this is going to change. Okay? So you do need to remember this 5 millimeter is for this. If you are going to apply this, these protocols, you need to put in the slice thickness, you need to put in the noise index, and then you can change your slice thickness, and you will see that the noise index will change. And when it changes, save that protocol as is. Right? Otherwise, your dose will go up. All right, this is the GE protocol with Acer. One of the things that I do not like, I do like the fact that they're not using 140. 
I do like the fact that they are going for 50% dose reduction when they are applying ACER, which is 50% ACER, which is quite high, uh, but it's quite reasonable. The image, the result is quite nice. I don't like the fact that it's 5 millimeter here, right? It's missing the information, right? This is a 0.625 detectors, 5 millimeter with ACER, doesn't get me, right? Three should be the max for chest, right? You can see much more calcium. You can get much more information when you have when you are slightly thinner slices for chest, and you can deal with it because chest CT does not have that much noise. Again, they aim for a noise index of 13, same as there without ACER, but they add 50% dose reduction step, which means that the noise index will be dialed up to give 50% dose reduction automatically. So you do not have to change your noise index or do the maths to figure out what it is, right? Uh, which is quite nice. So. Uh, this is with their ACER. Let's move forward. Uh, again, uh, how does the GE protocol compare to our protocol with uh, at MGH? Well, this is the GE protocol on AAPM. This is the MGH protocol. Again, we are a little bit more aggressive with our uh, KB. We use uh, 100 quite frequently. Our noise indices are for 2.5. But even if I did the maths, uh, we are perhaps at lower dose as compared to what GE recommends here. So uh, Toshiba, again, I have to make a very frank disclosure. I do like Toshiba as a company. I do like their 320 slice scanner, but unfortunately, I do not have one. So I have no experience with it. But the protocol on the AAPM website is over here. Again, same thing goes across to Toshiba. They're not recommending any KV reduction, which is surprising. You can get a lot from just making the KV at 100, certainly for average or smaller patients who are less than 80 kilogram or so. Right? The good thing is they are recommending their Shore Exposure 3D, which is their automatic exposure control technique. They are recommending a standard deviation of 12.5, which is quite reasonable. Uh, and the bad thing is that they are recommending 5 millimeter slices. Their detector happened to be 0.5, so you could go even lower. But any case, this is their protocol, and uh, it's quite good as a start. If your protocol doses are higher with this, you can certainly go to this level. Now, uh, as I said before, uh, lower KV is not being as actively recommended by the vendors as it should be, uh, but perhaps it should be. Uh, again, prefer the use of automatic exposure control technique for most indications, except when you're going to do very low dose exam, like a lung nodule or a lung cancer screening, uh, you know, then you can use a fixed MA. And then when you're going to use automatic exposure control technique, or even without, you should have the arms above the shoulder, right, always. Uh, I, I, had, uh, I had met a radiologist from uh, one of uh, an African nation. I do not want to name the nation or anything like that. And I had this conversation that, well, they say they, they have a 16-slice scanner from a very good vendor. I'm not going to name the vendor, right? And uh, they saw my chest CT, and they said, wow, your images look great, and you are half the dose that we use. What's wrong uh, with our protocol? And I was discussing with them. And, uh, and I showed, you know, I, I went to the scout image. And she looked at the scout image and said, your scouts look different. Your localizers look different. Well, why? Well, she said, well, I was never told that you're supposed to raise the arms of the patient above the head when you do chest and abdomen. All of our patients are done with arms in anatomical position by the side. Well, that's the reason, right? It was quite kind of touching to me that, well, they have this advanced scanner from a good vendor, and they do not have this simple knowledge, or at least nobody told them, that, well, they need to keep the arms up. And I'm sure this goes around beyond Africa to, to, to any place where they might not. But the arms should be placed above the shoulder, and if not, they should be at least kept on the body, not by the side of the body. Well, uh, thank you, and if you have any questions, please do ask. Any questions? Uh, no? Well, if you are not going to ask me, maybe I can ask you. <laughs> okay, I want one Siemens user to come to the mic. Um, the, the, the person with the sapphire in the back with the tie. 
Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, uh, can you give us your name and where you come from? Um, my name is Gene Payton. I am a local physicist here at Mayo Clinic. Oh, perfect. Well, Mayo Clinic has a big name. And I do know Dr. McCulloch was here last for the last summit. He was he cannot be here. Okay, so you have a, a semen scanner I get, and you have sapphires. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. We actually have just installed a flash scanner. Uh, previously, we were using um, some Sensation 64. So uh, in implementing the Sapphire on the flash scanner, we moved our protocol over. When we were able to use Sapphire, we lowered our reference um, mass. Okay. Uh, do you use a KV mod KV adjustment, or do you just use a fixed KV? Uh, yes, we are now using Care KV. Uh, previously, it was not available. Uh, previously, we we were using 120 KV. Um, we had lots of problems uh, getting. We actually had a comparison. Um, our radiologist preferred. 100 kV on one vendor and uh, were not able to, in their minds, match the quality on our Siemens 64. And part of it had to do with, um, I believe, kernel selection. So we were operating at a little bit higher dose using 120 kV on the Siemens 64. Um, currently, we are now basically equivalent using 100 KV for almost all patients on both scanners. That's a, that's a very helpful suggestion, actually. Dr. Sopanich actually raised that point a, a while back, and actually the care KV, just for people who do not have Siemens, is actually an automatic KV selection technique, which looks at the size of the patient and recommends an appropriate KV and MAS setting. Well, thank you very much for sharing this information. Thank you.